This video is brought to you by ASRock and the Z690 Tai Chi. Perfect platform for all 12th generation Intel Core processors. That's LGA 1700. In particular, it's got dual LAN, a killer E3100 2.5 gig LAN, and an Intel Gigabit LAN, along with the killer AX1675 Wi Fi 6E plus Bluetooth wireless adapter. Did you know you can use these with a killer NIC software and combine all of those NICs together into a single connection? That's right, when you're playing a game and doing bulk downloads and any other kind of transfer, it'll figure out which connection is the best to use for that and automatically use it. You can also prioritize traffic so your game gets the lowest latency path out of the system. And that's all in the killer software. I did a video on that in the past. You should check that out because the killer setup here is pretty similar, except this is on the Z690 platform. Oh, and did I mention this thing has Thunderbolt 4, a Realtek ALC 1220 codec with a Sabre audio DAC, and even more features than you can really shake a stick at. DDR5 6400, there's even an extra USB breakout header in the box, so you get two more USB ports than you can see on the back and front panel connections, so it's pretty awesome. Look, subscription everything is gnawing out your wallet from the inside. You don't need subscription everything. Uh, I haven't subscribed to cable service in years. And when I stopped, I took the money that I was paying for cable service and just sort of kept track of it on a spreadsheet. And that number kept getting larger and larger and larger. And so like TV that I wanted to watch, I could just buy on DVD like box sets. Not always new, sometimes from half price books or places like that. And I was shocked at how much TV I could buy and permanently own and add to my media collection and not have to worry about streaming it. I mean, you know, the, the box set of Knight Rider half price books for all five or six seasons is like 80 bucks. Cable TV costs more than that a month. I don't, the business model is just, I can't imagine anybody would want to pay for that. So what about Spotify? You know, Spotify has been in the news. Can you replace Spotify? Well, yes. At level one, we've got the ultimate home server series, and we're kind of nerding out with it a little bit. But if you set up something for your home server, which can be an old crappy machine, like a cast off uh, from your business, uh, Windows 11, the upgrade there, they're making everybody get rid of anything older than 8th gen Intel. And I got news for you, a 7700, an Intel i7-7700 that would probably have to be retired from your office would make a heck of a nice home server. 8 gigabytes of RAM, a couple terabytes of storage, that really will make a nice home server. A Raspberry Pi at another generation or two, especially with the compute modules, will be an easy, you know, sort of uh, self-hosting solution. It's really coming for the lower end NAS units. I mean, some of the higher end NAS units, they're as expensive as a dedicated computer. But we're getting into territory where you don't even need that. You can have a, you know, a low power, you know, 15 or 20 watt Raspberry Pi that, that does all of this. So I want to show you how you can replace Spotify. So the software that I'm going to show you is called Navidrome. It's a, it's, a, it's a freemium kind of thing. You can self-host it, but you can also subscribe to it within. And that's a fine business model. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to knock that. But I want to show you how to self-host it. With self-hosting, there's two things. One, how do you set this up? And two, how do you connect back to it when it's your home connection? Well, uh, we at Level 1 have done a number of videos on VPN software and how to use a VPN to connect back to your stuff. And this is different. Like, you don't just have a VPN on your phone. You're controlling the VPN. You create the VPN on your own. So you have a VPN from your devices, your phone, your laptop, whatever, to the other computers in your life. It's not in the cloud. It's at your home. It's your home lab. It's your ultimate home server. And uh, the last video I did was on setting up WireGuard or taking the tutorials that we've done in the past on WireGuard for hosting it on Linode and sort of turning that around and saying, well, you can also host WireGuard on your home internet connection as well so that you can connect back to your home server so that, you know, from your cell phone, you're able to get to your home media server and anything else that you want without opening up those services on the internet. I assure you that someone is scanning your home internet connection for any services that you might be running, looking for any little vulnerability that they can use to install crypto mining software or to hold your files for ransom or whatever. So that aside, let's talk steps. I want to get you up and running with Navidrome as simply and as painlessly as possible. But uh, if you want to do that, just skip the next part because I'm going to talk about some stuff that I encountered in TrueNAS 
that if you encounter, you can sort of work around it as you level up and you get your understanding because it supports Docker. And I just sort of blindly tries, tried to use Docker commands to get Docker up and running. But the more correct way to do it is probably through uh, TrueNAS uh, charts, which is a uh, Kubernetes. It's the whole Kubernetes versus Docker thing. So you can skip to here if you want to just get to the part where it's like, okay, give me the easy way to install this. But otherwise, let's talk about what I did so that you don't make the same mistake. So what I'm about to show you is based on TrueNAS scale. That's the one that's Linux based. Uh, Linux lets you color outside the lines a little bit more, but the UI uh, from IX systems, the people that make TrueNAS is maybe not quite as put together on TrueNAS scale, the Linux base as TrueNAS core. They've been doing FreeBSD as the basis for their platform since time immemorial. And so WireGuard support and all that kind of stuff is just baked right into the TrueNAS core GUI. Whereas the TrueNAS scale, well, you, you got to color outside the lines a little bit. Fortunately for this, what we're talking about is Docker images. So it's pretty easy. So you log into the TrueNAS scale GUI, we're going to come down to apps, and then I'm going to do launch Docker image. How do I know that I want to do launch Docker image? Well, if we go to the Navidrome installation, they have a Docker installation guide using the official Docker images with Docker and Docker Compose. Look at that. We can just run that directly from here and be good to go. So what I want to do is create storage for the music or, or point it to my existing storage. I'm going to go to storage and under tank, I'm going to go to add data set because tank is my ZFS file system. I'm going to call this uh, Navidrome. You could call it music or anything else if you want. I'm just going to leave all this on the defaults and I'm going to save. Now under that data set, I'm going to create two more data sets, one for data and one for music. And that's because that's what the Navidrome documentation recommends. Not different data sets, it uses folders, but we're going to use data sets because it's fine. I'm also going to turn off compression on the music because the music is already compressed. It doesn't really save us anything. I mean, that, that compression is so lightweight that it's barely any overhead, but there you go. So I'll leave that at the defaults for all of this and I will save. So now the, the path for this is going to be slash tank slash navidrome slash data and slash music. And that's going to be important when we configure our container. So I'm going to come over to apps here and I'm going to do launch Docker image. We'll call it navi, navidrome next. And then we're going to, oops, we're going to come over to our documentation, navidrome and it's navidrome latest. So this right here is what it wants. What it's asking for is that. So do the GUI here. We need that the latest. You can specify a specific version if you want. Uh, entry configure container command conf configure container arguments. So I'm going to add uh, and we can add a whole bunch of arguments here, but it gives us the arguments in this command. So restart unless stopped. And the port is 4533 by default. And the, the two volumes are the, the path. This is the, so it's like, okay, this, now this is not slash path to data. This is slash tank navi drone uh, data. And we got that for music as well. See here in our, our music. Now this also lets you specify the user and group ID. I don't think we need this for, for TrueNAS. And then restart unless stop. This will automatically restart it, uh, which is great. And finally, we will set an environment variable that is the um, the log level. And so with the log level set here to info, it's gonna give us some informational logging messages. Oh, I could have set it in environment variables here in the GUI, whoops. Oh well, networking. Let's add an external interface. Uh, I'm gonna pick that one because that's the network interface that I'm using. If you're not sure, you can go to the networking tab and then we can give it a static IP address or use DHCP. I'm just going to use DHCP. 
DNS and everything, all that's fine. Port forwarding, uh, we did specify 4533. We will allow priv privilege mode on this. Probably don't have to. You can also assign a GPU to a container, not necessary in this case. Let's save it and see if it works. Navidrome is deploying. The UI would probably be better if they made it to where you could copy paste Docker Compose or if you could copy paste the command and then let it fill out the GUI however it wants because most of the time people aren't going to be manually doing it via the GUI as I did. So yeah, when you're looking at Navidrome, it has Docker-based installations. You can use Docker Compose or or Docker. And if you you know download the Docker Compose file to the music folders that we created in the data store and run Docker Compose up, it'll totally bring it up. Oh, except for networking. You have to manually add that, that IP tables exception for networking, like I showed you. But it works with, with those two caveats. Uh, doing it directly through the Docker interface, it was just starting and stopping mysteriously, and I gave you some tools for diagnosing that. But it seems the better way is to probably use the charting system. And so there's a helpful how-to, and I would definitely recommend that you do this, because you can install more additional stuff in True Charts, and Navidrome just happened to be there. Now what happens if you find something that's not in True Charts? Well, you're going to be dropping back to the command prompt. You can check out the guide on the Level 1 forum. That will definitely get you there. I will be more than happy to help you color outside the lines, which is uh, probably not the best advice, but it surely should be, like the UI for this probably should be, do you have a Docker Compose thing that you'd like to create an application from? Click paste the Docker Compose file in here. Bloop. I've put that file here in your data set. Would you like to run Docker Compose for this now? And it just reads and parses and that does everything. You know, I know if wishes were horses, but that's there's there's got to be a better approach than, than what we have here. Now, one thing if you're using the uh, the True Charts way of doing this is the type of storage you'll want to select host path and you'll want to map, you know, slash MNT slash tank slash music to the music path in the container and probably also the same for the data so that the data will survive uh, upgrade or removal of this container. You see, it's pretty slick the way that this container stuff works because you can put your stuff, your data, which in this case is your music, which is probably somewhere else, and then like the configuration data that Navidrome needs to do its thing, like a little, an index of your music and stuff like that. Those can be stored in folders, and then everything else as part of the application is stored as part of this containerization system. And it's a nice separation of this less ephemeral data versus the more ephemeral data of the application. Because you don't want your music to live inside of this application. When this, when this container goes away, it'll take your music with you. Whereas when you've got your music stored in a shared folder and you just map that path inside the container, you can even map those like your music path read only. So you're sure whatever this application is doing is it's not able to make any writes or changes to your, uh, into your music folder. Now, sometimes you do want that. Like if you have a program that can update the metadata and fix and clean up the metadata, then obviously it's gonna need write access to the music. But if you're worried about protecting your collection from a new application you're testing, well, you can map it read only. And ta-da, we're good to go with the Navidrome demo album because all I've got is Weird Al. So you click, you play, you got playlists. Isn't this cool? And you can access this from anywhere if you do the WireGuard thing. And it will work fine on your phone. Your phone. Your iPhone. Your Android phone. Your laptop. Your tablet. Whatever you want. Whatever you can run WireGuard on securely without exposing it to the internet. Now you can expose it to the internet if you want. But then you have to keep up with updating it and make sure that it's updated as soon as updates are available. Because of the security aspect. The more popular this gets the greater the chance somebody will find a flaw in it that lets them take over remotely. The chances of that happening with something like WireGuard or other VPN software like OpenVPN is much, much smaller, although non-zero, as compared with a web application like this. But this goes to show you too, if you start thinking bigger picture here, like Discord. Discord, when you download the Discord desktop application, it's running inside a container that's basically a little web server with a little web browser. So when you're interacting with the Discord UI, you're basically interacting with a glorified web browser. A lot of everyday quality of life applications can be very easily implemented in a web browser. And that means that you can carry it around with you everywhere. That doesn't mean that you're dependent on the cloud because a lot of those quality of life applications 
there are non-cloud alternatives like Navidrome. Now there's not just Navidrome, there's a ton of other stuff in the forum thread at level one. This is just one of many, many, many videos on building the, uh, the ultimate home server. And this one is just for media. We've also got another one on knowledge base and knowledge management. And just like there's many other programs other than Navidrome for managing media, there's lots of other applications for managing a knowledge base. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at getting Navidrome set up on your ultimate home server, but also as a, for instance, for our WireGuard server, you can be your own Spotify and discontinue your Spotify subscription running on TrueNAS scale, but you can run on any platform with Docker. I mean, it'll work fine on a Synology NAS or other appliance or even TrueNAS core, probably with a little bit less headache, but hey, TrueNAS is an incredible product and point out these little issues, they'll get them fixed, don't worry. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Probably working on improving this guide.